Sunday school is now in session. <laughs> well, Sunday school is now in session. So says two of my granddaughters. Listen, if you want to join me live, you want to talk about this lesson, just write on there. I want to talk on the lesson and I will give you a link to click and it'll bring you right in. I'll put you in the back green room and we will adjust your camera and screen. Good morning to you all. Good morning. I pray that all is well. God is a good God. Good morning, at church and Sunday school viewers, says Jerry Gray. Good morning, Darcy is in the house, or Darcy, depends on Mother Camellia. Good to see you on this morning. Sister Michelle Carter, blessings unto you, to the Sunday school and the colleagues. Good morning, is it Brenda Paget or Paget? Good morning from Jonesboro, Louisiana. Blessings to you on this morning. There is my niece, Natasha Miles. Blessings unto you. Good to see you. Linda Davis, I pray that all is well with you. Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. There's my cousin in the sunny side of California, Elder Taylor. Glenda Green, good morning from Inglewood, California. Cheryl Osborne is here. Blessings to the church and family. All the way from Indiana, Renee Burton, good morning to you and blessings to you. Louisiana is still in the house. Good morning, Cindy D. What's up, my brother? Good to see you on this morning. I pray all is well with you. Inglewood is in the house. Round two, let's get it. Good morning. There is Lady Kamitras, who is the one who was singing this particular jingle. Let me get some more coffee. Yeah, just take this one. It was pretty good. Good morning, church family and Dr. Jones. I need oh, oh, I'm already in trouble. I'm already late. There it is. Welcome back. Uh, God is good. And I want to find out who the person was that said, uh, good morning, but you are not registered so that I can just know how to or who I'm speaking with. I'll go here. Uh, blessings unto you. All right. Well, I can't find out who that is. Uh, but God is good. A uh, very interesting lesson that we're dealing with. Uh, we're talking about hear and do the word. Hear and do the word. Now, if you want to scan for notes, take your phones out right now. Some of y'all are watching on your large screen TV. Take your no your phone out, iPhone or or Samsung. Uh, and just scan this over there to the left, right here. Scan that with your phone. Put it on camera, scan it, and it'll take you right to where the notes are. Then you can just type in here and do the word, and you'll be right in uh, to the actual lesson at hand. Today we're the Kojic lesson, Kojic Legacy. We're dealing with hear and do the word. We're in the book of James, the first chapter, verses 19 through 27. James is writing to a group of people. Remember, this church had been of the body of Christ or Israel, the 12 tribes. They were scattered. There is a saying that I said earlier um, this week that when in Rome, do as the Romans. I need you to understand that it's improper. When in Rome, do as the believers. When in Rome, do as the Christians. Today, uh, although that they were going through struggles, there were some challenges, they were scattered throughout, James still writes them and tells them they still got to comply to the word of God. So regardless of where you are in life, if you are a believer, I don't care if you're in prison, you still got to comply to the word of God. So let's see what he is writing and what he is saying. All right. 
Let's go. Lay down. He says, Wherefore, my brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, now, wherefore, beloved brethren, he's talking to the body of Christ, if I can use that term, because regardless of where they were scattered, whatever dispersed, regardless, he still gives instructions for what all of them are supposed to do. He says to be swift, to be slow, and to be slow. Number one, he says, be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Then he says, why? Because your wrath does not produce the righteousness that God approves of. So King James uses the word wherefore. The word wherefore here or in the, is in the lesson twice, but they bear two different meanings. The word wherefore here means know this. In other words, he's not saying because of not this particular wherefore. What he's doing is he's giving information. He says, understand this or this, you know, or take note of this. Because he's speaking to a group of individuals. Blessings to you, uh, Reverend Lorinda Barber. If you're ready to come on camera, let me know. Let me know. Good morning unto you. Uh, here's a question. Are they 12 tribes in this lesson? Uh, the Jewish believers. Yes, there are still 12 tribes. Uh, as a matter of fact, somebody find, I don't know if I got time to find that in the verse chapter one. Uh, do I want to do this? Uh, I'm going to keep on moving. Read James, the first chapter and, and post it and let me know what you come up with. A good morning to you, Sister Tina. Let me see what you say here, right here. And what does she say? She says, amen, always do as God has. Uh-huh. Don't worry about seeing names because you can always see them on Facebook. You're doing a good job. Oh, thank you. But a lot of times I need to know who I'm addressing. So I have a link that they can click so that I can see the names uh, because I like to uh, speak to people properly. Amen. But thank you. Thank you, Sister Tina. Good to see you today. Second jurisdiction, Pastor Larry Taylor, blessing to you. Southern California, all the Californians and Oklahomanites is coming on. And it's kind of cold here. Shame on y'all. So let's get back to the lesson. So he says, wherefore, my beloved brother, he called them brother. Regardless of what they were going through, he still addressed them as brothers. He didn't use what we call his apostolic anointing his apostolic authority to demand and to command, but he addresses them as brothers. I might be the pastor of a church, but the members where I pastor or shepherd are still my brothers and sisters in Christ. I might be married to Lawanda, but she is still my sister in Christ. The Bible says fellow heir. We are fellow heirs of the grace. So if I can't treat her like a wife, the song says, treat her like a lady. If I can't treat her like a lady, I would still treat her as my wife, my, my sister in Christ. First instruction, he says, is be swift, 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 which means quick. Be swift with the meaning of be ready and be prompt. First thing he says to be ready and to be prompt to do is to be ready not to talk, but to be ready to hear. Be quick to hear. Be prompt to hear. Because oftentimes we do a lot of talking and we ain't heard. You want to know why? One of the reasons why husband and wife have so much struggle when they debate and argue, they're not trying to hear one another. They're trying to get their point across. They don't care what you say. I just going to let you. Okay, are you through? Are you through? Are you through means I've not heard nothing you said. I just want to get my point across. What we need to do is be quick. Be swift, be prompt, be ready to hear. My dad always says, I have two ears and one mouth. I hear twice as much as I say. I do understand he being a Jones, that's hard. That must mean he must hear a lot because he says. <laughs> so every person should be ready and quick to hear rather than to speak. 
Ecclesiastes 5 and 1 says, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. Swift, swift, be ready, ready, swift, swift, be ready, be ready, be swift, be prompt. You need to do a teaching on apostolic anointing one day. I have questions. Very good. I think we will do that. James is a servant uh, of God and of the Lord Jesus to, to the 12 tribes. There it is. Thank you. To the 12 tribes. Thank you. That, there it is right there. I want y'all to see this because uh, Sister Bronia Cat, Bronia Cat put forth a good question. Were there still 12 tribes? And here it is. Thank you, Sister Michelle uh, Carter. She posted James, the first chapter. He says, a servant of Jesus Christ. He says, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. You see it? Greeting. Swift. Swift. Yes. Swift. Swift. Uh, uh -huh. Speedily. Quickly. Be in a hurry, be in a hurry, that being ready, prompt to hear can be a challenge for many. Yes, because we don't want to hear, we want to talk. We don't even hear in testimony service, we're busy talking. So it's important, it is imperative that you're speedily to listen first, swift. Then it says slow to speak, uh, which means to talk at random. It's usually referring to children with the meaning of just to talk much. Because oftentimes when we're talking, we're just babbling. I was watching somebody teach a Sunday school lesson the other day, and I was very much disappointed because they were just babbling, just go, 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 go. You can't have a babbling school. You can't have a talking school. You have to have a Sunday school. Come on. You've got to have a Sunday school. This one lesson and a book that is well needed to be taught. I agree. Blessings. There's my sister, Sister Evangelist uh, Debbie Scott. Blessings on to you uh, this morning. Swift or careful to hear. We've got to be. Look like we're going to get stuck on that. He says, but slow to wrath. 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 Wrath is the feeling and expression of strong displeasure and hostility. The Bible says, he that refrains his lips is wise. Proverbs 10 and 19. That's a message and a lesson by itself. Why are you so in a hurry to give them a piece of your mind? Saints don't give people a piece of their mind because you gave God your whole mind. My body belongs to God. My body belongs to God. My soul and my mind belongs to God. My soul. Remember we sang that song? My body. How do you take a part of what you gave to God and give it to people? I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. No, he said, be slow to wrath, which is the feeling and expression of strong displeasure. The Bible says, he that, that have knowledge spares his words. Proverbs 17 and 27. Be careful of what you speak. Choose your words before you speak. A soft answer turns away wrath. You ain't always, ain't, ain't. You ain't always got to say what you want to say. He says, why? Because the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. The word wrath means anger at a state of mind. Wrath is indignation. Dr. Kathy Oliver says to pause every now and then. So I'll say it again. Wrath is indignation. I pause. <laughs> wrath as an outburst of vengeful mind. Wrath is anger displayed. But he says, be slow to display your anger. Because the wrath of man doesn't work. The word work means to work out, to bring about, to accomplish, or to produce. It doesn't produce the righteousness of God. That word righteousness means the essence of which is right or even right actions. So the believer's everyday action, though faced with daily trials, should line up to God's expectation, not human expectation. That is another reason why I'm afraid of the camera. 
I'm not good with my words. Plus, I talk too much. Well, that's why I have the training session in the teacher's lounge. And we're going to be dealing more with training on how to teach, to present yourself. He that refrains his lips is wise. This is a powerful lesson. The Lord recently required me to be quiet, hushed. I, you probably are trying to say, shut up. <laughs> Stop it, Joan. I absolutely understand. I'm going to say this and move on. You all are talking about church hurt. But what I came out of was called church trauma. I was murdered and killed. My throat was sliced and my heart was pierced and bursted. It wasn't church hurt, brother. They tried to kill me. But I praise God. I don't hold it against none of them. Come on, somebody. I'm going to keep on moving. So your anger does not produce, promote, or even demonstrate the, the righteousness that God accepts. And so we've got to be very careful of how we so much want to just, you know, give people uh, uh, that mind or whatever. Be very careful. Okay, lay down. He says, wherefore, now that's the second wherefore. Remember, wherefore was in here twice. This is the second one, and it bears a separate meaning. Look at his instructions. First thing he says is lay apart. Then he tells you what to lay apart. All filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. That's really one phrase. Somebody brought that out to me. All filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Now, he don't just tell you to lay apart, ladies and gentlemen, but he tells you what else to do. He says, once you lay that apart, but receive, he wants us to receive the engrafted word. But he says to receive this with meekness, which is able to save your, notice what he said, it's able to save your souls. He didn't tell your bodies. See, our focus is too much on our bodies and not our soul. We feed, we exercise, we cut, we trim, we shave, we manicure, we pedicure our body, but we don't do nothing to the spirit, man, or to the soul. And that's a problem. He says, so get rid of all uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness. And in a humble, gentle, modest spirit, receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your hearts contains the power that saves your soul. So based on this information that he has provided, he now gives a call to action. Lay apart. Somebody need to type lay apart. Lay apart means to renounce. Lay apart means to lay off or to lay down, to lay aside, to put off in the figurative sense as one would put off a filthy garment. Lay aside, lay off. Filthiness is dirt or moral uncleanness. It's used here in this form. Superfluity means over and above an excessive amount of of naughtiness. Naughtiness is simply wickedness as an evil habit of the mind or evil in a moral sense, meaning wickedness of the heart. He says to lay that aside. He says to take it off. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if the instructions were to lay it apart, that means you have been authorized to do it. Don't tell me what you cannot do. Don't tell God what you don't have the power to do. Don't tell God that I can't stop smoking and God says, yes, you can. Or I can't stop drinking. I can't stop gambling. Whatever the sin may, I'm not calling out a specific. I'm using those as an example because God has empowered the believer to do it. So he says to lay apart, which means you have been given the freedom, the authority, and the power to lay it 
apart. Mm. Type it. Lay apart. Come on. Lay apart. Lay it apart. Thank you for your Sunday school teachers. Love the way you explained the lesson. You are so welcome. I appreciate you. And thank you so much. Yes, yes. Verse 21 has the ability to save your soul if you lay apart and receive. Lay it apart. Lay it apart, Winnie. Lay it apart. Brenda says, lay it apart. Lay it apart. Yes, lay apart. Lay apart. Come on, lay it apart. We can do it. Whatever the case may be, he says, lay it apart. He uses the phrase all filthiness, which means all forms of filthiness or moral filth. Paul says in Romans 13 and 12 to cast off the works of darkness. And then he says to receive, receive, which means to accept deliberately with meekness. Meekness here is the softness of temper. Meekness is forbearance and gentleness. He says, receive the engrafted word. The engrafted word means to germinate or even to grow or spring up or to produce. Because this word of God will produce in the life of the believer what needs to be produced. Somebody said they can't hear. What do you mean you can't hear? Let me know if you all can hear me. Let me know if you can't hear me. Lay apart. Lay apart. Blessings to you. Lay apart. Lay apart. Lay apart. Look at my sister. Come on, sister. Thank you. There's Brony Cat. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Let me do this for my Brony Cat. <laughs> Thank you, Brony Cat. Lay apart. Lay apart and don't pick it up again. Lay apart. Sheila, it's a pleasure meeting you last week at your church, at your conference. Thank you so much for your support. Lay it apart. Yes, yes. Blessings. There's my sister Precious. There's my sister Precious. I love me some Precious. Lay apart. Yes, we can hear you can hear. Yes, yes. Okay, good. I want to keep on going. Lay apart. He says lay apart. That means you have the authority, the power, and the ability. Remember, never ask God to do what he has already empowered you to do. Lay apart. The Bible says in Psalm 25 and 9, the meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. The meek will he teach his way. Now, here is the struggle with the people. They say when in Rome do as the Romans, that's a lie. When in Rome do as the Christians. How are you going to be uh, in the lion's den with tiger stripes? Unless you are a tiger. You can't remove the stripes if you go into the lion's den. Why are we removing Christianity on our job and in the community? How come the world don't know we're saved unless we go to church? I'm going to leave that right there and keep on moving. Here we go. You ready? But here's a strong one. But be ye doers. That's action, ladies and gentlemen. That's action of the word. Which word? The engrafted. Be doers of the engrafted word and not hearers only. Because if you are a hearer only, you're deceiving yourself. You think you're getting there. You think you're doing right. You think you're going to make it in, but you're not because you're not doers. You're just a hearer. Now watch what it says. Doers, doers, they were told to receive the engrafted word, which is able to save their soul, regardless of where they are. To be a doer, doer, means a keeper of a law or a precept. The word do means to practice, 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 practice the word, practice the word. If the God is, the, if the, if the Bible says, if you have ought against your brother, the Bible says, go to him and him alone. If you call me, you have gone against God. If you post it on Facebook, you have become a hearer only. If the word says, if you have all against your brother, he didn't say call your sister. That's part of your clique. 
He says, if you have aught against your brother, go to him. Aught means anything. Go to him and him alone so that you can gain your brother. If he doesn't hear you, take two or three more witnesses, not your girlfriends, witnesses for the sole purpose of gaining your brother back. If he doesn't hear them, then take him before the church, not the little babies, but those who have the wisdom and the counsel of God. Nowhere did he say take him before the pastor. That's last. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So if you if we don't practice that, then we're not doers of the word. We're not practicing his word. We are here. That's why we got so many scandals. That's why so many people is all on Facebook with these church problems. Shame on anybody that live streams a struggle in any church. You are mess dog and you're full of mess. You are evil in your heart and all you like to do is expose people. You do not have God in you at all. And I challenge anybody that will. How do you take and expose what happens in the house of God? It's a circumstance. It's a situation. If you was on the other end of that camera, you would be broken, hurt, and embarrassed if anybody exposed you. Why are you doing the same thing? Because you're not a doer of the word. You are a hearer. The Bible said if you have ought, go to him and him alone. <laughs> you're a mess dog. Ah, come on now. So I'm going to keep on reading because the emails is coming in. What if it's the pastor himself? I don't care who it is. Very, very great question. Listen, we have round table. Let me, let me take a little moment on this. We have round table Bible discussion and two purposes, two reasons why we have round table. Number one is so that the people can ask any question they want to ask. Number two is so that they can ask me, why do I teach what I teach? I've given the church to know that if I'm walking out of order, if I'm teaching against scripture, you can pull me to the side and say, Pastor, I don't think you're saying what's right. I don't think you're doing right. I don't think you're walking up right. Matter of fact, I'm a church of God in Christ pastor and there's no board over the pastor. But I have established a council board at the church where I pastor. And if they call me and says, Pastor, you're struggling with some things. We need you to get that right. I promise to submit myself to that council. I got that from my dad. So if your pastor is walking out of order, if your pastor is going against God, stop all this stuff about leadership can only tell leadership. I want you to understand two things. Number one, your pastor is your brother in Christ. He said, if your brother, there is no pastor that is not a brother. And number two, if you're going to go to him, go to him alone in the spirit of meekness, but make sure that what you're bringing is accurate and scriptural, biblical, not because you do or don't like it. it has nothing to do with your likes or dislikes, but it has everything to do with if the scriptures is right and if your pastor is either walking wrong or teaching wrong. I'm not talking about a mistake that he made. I'm talking about walking wrong, teaching wrong, or making something that's not biblically correct, you go to him because he's your brother in Christ. Any member of the church where I pastor has a right to approach me and say, Pastor, I don't think I, I, I'm having a struggle with what you're saying right here. Can we talk? Uh, years ago, I had to teach something about um, Judas. And I knew that my pastor taught differently on that subject. So before Sunday school, I met with him and prayed with him in the office to say, Pastor, we don't see eye to eye, and I cannot teach this scripture in Sunday school coming Sunday, and I know that you have a different viewpoint. That's how you got to do it. Uh, oh, my God. Yes, our round table is every Thursday, 7.30 to 8.30. You can ask any question, and they can ask me then, Pastor, why do you teach what you teach? And if I can't prove them biblically, I've told the church, you don't have to follow me on that. <sighs> Kojic General Board isn't not over Kojic pastors. That's a yes and a no. They are a general board. Now, if the membership has a problem with me, they can, number one, go to me. If they cannot, second step is they will talk to the superintendent. There is a rule. There is a ranking order. Superintendent, they can't deal with that. Then they have to bring that matter against the, the pastor of the church with the bishop. 
And then there is a general council of pastors and elders, not the general board. There is a general council in the church of God in Christ called the general council of pastors and elders. That's who we bring this up with. So the question was, how did the meeting end? The meeting end that we still had our different beliefs. And the pastor instructed me, teach your belief. And my words to the pastor is, I will bypass my belief because I don't want to make you and I look like we're on separate. I was the deacon of the church. I was the Sunday school teacher. So when it came to the lesson, I taught the lesson according to scripture, but there are certain things that I didn't have to put on the floor because it would have been a contradiction. You want to be in peace with people, not contradiction. Oh, oh, glory to God. Thank you, Reverend Barber. Thank you so much. <laughs> Help me, Doc. I'm in trouble. I'm going to keep on moving because my emails is going to come in in a minute. Yeah. Yeah, you cannot teach what you don't know. The problem is, I'm going to move on. The pastor thinks that Judas was born for the reason or for the purpose of betraying Jesus, and he was not. Why would Jesus cause you to be born to betray him and then kill you or cause you to burn in hell? That would be an injustice to Judas. Judas was born with a free will as everyone else. As a matter of fact, the Bible said that Satan or the devil entered into Judas. Wait a minute. If he was born to betray Jesus, he would have been born with the devil already. The fact that the devil entered into him shows us that Judas received the entrance of him. The Bible said he was a thief. Stop teaching what people are teaching. Stop teaching what you heard. Teach what you know. Lastly on that, the Bible never said that the same people that cried Hosanna is the same one that cried crucify him. That's not what the Bible said. The Bible said the children cried Hosanna. It was their fathers, the Pharisees and all of them, that incited the people to say crucify him. Be biblically correct in anything that you do, including if someone come to me, then I'll become a pastor, but I'm still a brother and I will receive you. It happened to me. I made a statement and a sister of the church challenged me publicly. And I went home and found out that that person was right. And I came back the following Sunday and I publicly apologized and said, you was right. However, don't challenge me like that again. You were right in your statement. I was in error, but don't ever shout it across the pulpit that I'm in error because the person was trying to be nasty, but they still told the truth. And so I repented to the church for that statement that I made. It was biblically incorrect. Oh, my God. Hey, y'all working me hard today. Let's see what we got. Because I got to get back to the blessed are the servant hearted who shine with the master's joy. Thank you for all that you do to serve the Lord and his people. I've been truly blessed by your keeper. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. I need that blessing to you. Thank you so much. A lot of people would rather the matter to take to their pastor and counseling so that it would prevent uh, two sisters of blood. Okay, yeah, uh, no. I mean, yes, I understand. But we have, to do, uh, we have to do what the Bible says. If the Bible says if you have all, go to him and him alone, we have to do that. Don't take the pastor in the room with you because that's not what the scripture says. I understand what you're saying. But if you want it right, if you want a biblical answer, you've got to apply a biblical principle. Write that. If you want a biblical answer, you must apply a biblical principle. If you want a biblical answer, you must apply a biblical principle. If you want a biblical answer, see my time is up. You must apply a biblical principle. Absolutely. It is an error to teach something that's against the leader of the house. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And therefore, I refuse to teach that part about that Judas was not born to deceive Jesus. He later did that as a betrayal. Okay. You've got to be wise in what you're doing. We all have free will. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Other church. Yeah, pastor would have signed us. I didn't. 
I didn't. I knew her. I knew two things. Number one, she was right. But number two, she was trying. She was messy with it. But I didn't bother the messy part. But the following Sunday, I did bring it to the fact that if you, if you, it's okay to say something that I did in error, but don't challenge me. You can say it. I don't care if you say it out loud. But when you challenge me, you're of the wrong spirit. Okay. If you want a biblical answer, you must apply a biblical principle. Now, there's Sister Kimitra Daniel Danielle. She's part of our Thursday night. She will tell you, there have been times when I apologize. Yes, when I've done something wrong or I was out of order or I made a wrong statement or whatever. Hey, ain't no shame in my game. Old folks said, I'm trying to make it in. And I'm not going to, I would not allow a situation or incorrect Bible application for my power to keep me from getting in. Ah, let's continue. He says, be doer, 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 doers and not hearers only. Because if you're a hero only, you're deceiving yourself. That is, gentlemen, the curtains are now opening up. He says, for if any man be a hearer, a hearer of the word and not a doer, he likens him unto a man that looks in a glass. That word glass, ladies and gentlemen, is a mirror. He looks at himself, right? Then he leaves and goes his way and straightway. The word straightway means immediately. He forgets the type of man that he was because he didn't correct what he saw. He did not adjust what he saw. Ladies and gentlemen, he only looked in the mirror to look in the mirror. So the writer says, if you're just a hearer only and not a doer, you're just like a guy who looks in the mirror. He glances in the mirror just to look in the mirror, but he's not looking in the mirror to see what's wrong, what's out of line, what's out of pocket, what's incorrect, to see if he doesn't look presentable or does some of us ain't looking in the mirror because our dress code is not presentable for worship on a Sunday or some of our dress code ain't even presentable to be in your own house by yourself. Some of us, the dog shouldn't even see how we dress it. If you practice obeying and grab the word of God, he said, you won't be like this man who looked in a, a mirror. He's beholding, perceived or to observe his face, his countenance or his look in a glass or in a mirror. He beholdeth, he, he observes and then he goes his way. He says, and then straightway or immediately he forget. Now watch this. Forget means to give an over to oblivion. He forgets. Which means also because when you forget something, you don't care for it. When you forget something, you neglect it. He forgets. The reason why you forget is because you're not glancing in it for correction. You're not looking in the mirror to observe where you are. Every time we open up the Bible, it's a mirror. And the Bible should be the lens that we're looking at to find ourselves. Stop pointing at T.D. Jakes. Stop pointing at William Murphy. Stop pointing at uh, Jamal Bryant. Stop pointing at Bishop whatever. Stop pointing at your sister. Look in the scriptures and point at yourself. And let me say, come on now. Look in this thing right here called a Bible. And say, oh, 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 my glasses are not right. Oh, my cord is not right. Oh, my mic is not right. Oh, my eyes is not right. Oh, my life is not right. Oh, I need to line up. When you look in the grafted, the engrafted word, when you do that, You'll see yourself. You won't see others. We look in the, in the mirror or the scriptures to see others. Stop looking in there to see others. Look in there to see you. Come on now. Amen, Uncle Rodney. And that's my sister. <laughs> we look in the mirror to see others. Stop looking in the mirror to see others. Look in the mirror to see yourself. Somebody said years ago, whenever we read scripture, our Bible should be full of tears because when we saw how far we was from God, it ought to cause us to start crying when we see how far we are from. I don't care what's going on in New York, in California, in Georgia, in LA, as it relates to what other people are doing because they're doing whatever they're doing. I'm not saying I don't care as it relates to that. But I'm saying that's not my focus. I don't get up on Sunday to focus on what other people are doing. I got tons of people that's trying to find out, Lord, how can I make it in? 
I spend my time teaching and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I spend my time studying, not just for you all only, but for me. Because when I do in-depth study, it brings me and draws me closer. When I went to Atlanta, Georgia, when that precious heart saw me and embraced me with tears in my eyes, I don't care how many hundreds of dollars I paid to fly, to eat, to Uber, to stay in hotels, to pay for conferences of the Church of God in Christ. I didn't care how much it cost me. That one moment was worth it all. Song said, I'll trade a lifetime for one day. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So today, don't focus on who's singing. Shut your eyes and get to God for yourself. Don't worry about who's wearing what. That's not why you're looking in the mirror. He said, what happens is he forget, which means given over to oblivion. When you forget something, you reject it. When you forget something, you no longer care for it. He forgets what's, what manner of man, what sort of person he was. He forgets because he ain't focused. He's not looking to correct himself. He's not looking to adjust himself. He's just looking. He is a hearer of the word only. But, ladies and gentlemen, whoever looketh, looketh, looketh to the perfect, which means freedom. Why are y'all trying to be bound with these Old Testament ways of worship? Come on now. I'm going to leave it alone. Whosoever looketh, looketh, looketh into the perfect law of liberty, freedom, and continueth. Here's the word. Whoever looks in there and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Ladies and gentlemen, that word blessed means happy, but it means happier. It means prosperous. Yes. Prosperous. Did I spell that right? Y'all know what it is. Prosperous. If any man among you sing, if he think that he is religious and he cannot hold his tongue, he deceives himself and his own heart. His religion is worthless. O-M-G. Let me come back to that. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the father is this. He going to name what it is. Stop this. To visit fatherless, which another word means bereaved, and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Now, wait a minute. Let's close. James. James can say... Whoever looks into the perfect law, he's making a contrast between a man and uh, uh, looking in the mirror. The perfect law is not the Old Testament of where we keep trying to make people stay. Old Testament is not an error. The Old Testament Mosaic law is. Never stop living the Old Testament, but don't make me practice the old Mosaic law. With all of these offerings. Mm, Jones. Hey. Keep on going. Whoever looketh. Which means to bestow. It means a close and attentive look. The word looketh also means to stoop down. Or to stoop in, into a thing. In order to look at it. He says and continue. Which means to remain. Mm. He, uh, uh, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. And continue therein. Uh, where is it? This man will be blessed in his deed. The word deed means he will be blessed in his doing. He will be blessed in the obedience that he renders to this perfect law of liberty of which we call the gospel of the kingdom of God. Then he says, if any man seem, which means to think, to imagine, to consider or even appear to be religious or fearing God or fearing or worshiping God 
and bridleth not. The word bridle means to hold in check. You said, you're saved, and I saved and sanctified. Baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and do speak in tongue as the Spirit give the utterance or the other folk. But you can't hold your tongue. You will, you will speak in tongue soon as the microphone gets to your mouth because you done forgot the words. So you go into the bar Now, I don't talk about people who go into the bar bars. I know bar bars make good chicken wings and Philly steaks in Chicago. But the problem is you just trying to impress somebody with your tongue. I'm not talking about everybody. I need you to hear what the writer is saying. He says you do all of that, but you can't bridle your tongue. You can't hold your peace. You have no self-control on what you say and when you say it and how you say it. He says you are deceiving yourself. The word deceive means to cheat. It means to beguile. He says, and your religion is vain. It is useless and it is of no purpose. I got to give you a piece of my mind. I got, no, you ain't got to. What you got to do is let the fruit of the spirit work and let vengeance be God. That's what you got to do. If he seem, if he think, if he imagine, if he consider, or if he appears to be religious, because that's what we're getting in this nowadays. We got an appearance. I'm tired of some of our worship services. I can't stand it. And I know if it boils my blood, I can imagine what God is going through. God has said, I gave my son. They beat him unrecognizable. And his blood came down from his body at Calvary and hit the earth. And God says, I split the veil in half from top to bottom so that you can come before me, Hebrews said, boldly and with thanksgiveness in my heart. I, only, I made a way and told you to be careful for nothing but in everything, I says to you, in prayer, supplication, which means be specific with God. He said, and thanksgiving, let your request be made known. But you choose to just go into a pretense of religion every Sunday. Right after service is over, I have seen videos of deacons, pastors, and preachers cussing in the pulpit. That religion, he says, is vain. True religion is to do what he says. First of all, he says pure, which means free from corruption, desire, and sin. Pure religion, pure religious worship, pure religious discipline, and undefiled or unsoiled is to visit, to look after, to inspect, to examine with the eye the fatherless or the orphan, or the word also means bereaved. When people are in the hour of bereavement, you need to get off your high horse or we need to get off of our high horse and visit those who are hurting. Come on. We didn't gave enough. Visit those. He says to visit, which means to examine with the eyes. I'm just a phone call away. Well, why don't you call them and reach out to them? Come on. I had a member that was missing for a while and I texted the member and I said, hey, been missing you. I know, I know. I said, I'll tell you what, if I don't see you this Sunday, Monday, I'm going to be at your house. <laughs> they came to visit the fatherless in their affliction. Affliction is a pressing. It's pressing together. Affliction is a pressure. Affliction is a distress. Now watch this. He's talking to those who are still scattered. But just because you're scattered and going through does not mean that you cannot still reach out to help others. Never let somebody tell you that hurt people can't help somebody else. Never let somebody tell you that a person that's broke can't help somebody else. That's a lie from the pit. You can still be broken and still help others. I'm going to tell you, no, I'm, I'm going to keep that, I'm going to leave it right there. Mm. And then he says, lastly, to keep himself, to, to attend to carefully, to take care of and to guard, guard himself, to keep himself unspotted from the world. So what he says is, is you are in a world 
of ungodly people, but you're living godly. You're in a world of people who are unrighteous, but you are living righteously. You're in a world of people who hates God, but you love God. You are in a world of people who don't know true religion, but you have true religion. You are in a world of people who can't stand other people, but because of the love of God in you, you love other people. He says, keep yourselves unspotted. That's it. Ah. Uh, uh, blessings unto you. <laughs> uh, it's very tough right now, brother, bro, bro, brother John. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. Uh, it's been kind of tough on me because I've been uh, uh, practicing pure religion. <laughs> I've been visiting the sick and looking out for others. But I will reach out to you, my brother. Oh, my. Some can be sick for two months and never hear from their pastor or the saints, absolutely. Today, call somebody who you've not seen. Who would do that? I'm challenging you as I close. Who will call somebody today? Call them today. Who, who, who will call somebody today? Come on, type in, I will. Type that. Who will call somebody today? Who gonna call? Say, I will. Who's gonna reach out to somebody you've not seen? You've not seen them in church or whatever. Who? I need some honest people to type, I will. I need 148 people to type, I will. Who's going to do it? Who else? Thank you. Come on. And so I got to close. Who? Who? While y'all doing that, I'm doing this right here. Listen, there it is. If you you love me, you want to support what I do, there is your ways of giving. I sound rough, don't I? There's your ways of giving. Know that as you give to me, I give back to the kingdom of God. I say this statement a lot. I don't do much church work no more. Church work involves doing the work of the church at the church, in church, doing service. But kingdom work is doing the work of the kingdom of God everywhere, all the time, and at all times, regardless of whether you go to church or not. And so I like to give to people. That's why my cash have to be full today and empty tomorrow, because I give according to the need of people. But so if you want to, there's the cash app, there's the Zelle, there's the Givelify. You can bring it in the church or you can mail it. If you want to scan for any more videos, there it is right there. It says ways to give. Those are the video scans. You can scan that to go to some of the other uh, videos. There it is right there. Snap a picture if you will, if you if you please. Please, sir, and please, ma'am. Lastly, who will do this? Who? Who? Who will? Who will? I'm looking. I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. I will. I will. Thank you. Who's going to reach out? That's Sister Michelle. That's Sister Michelle Phillips, y'all. That's the one who does my graphics for my Sunday school. That's my sister, y'all. I'm so proud of her. I will. I will. Today, today, I'm going to reach out to somebody today. I'm going to contact somebody today. I'm going to do it today, today. By text message, by email. No, don't do the email. Mm -mm. Because you need to make sure, unless you make sure that they reply. Thank you. I will. I will in Jesus' name. Thank you. I will. Better Roof, I will. Linda says, I will. Carol says, I will. Reverend, Reverend Bar uh, Barbara says, I will. And do weekly reach. Thank you. Diane says, I will. Sheila says, I will. Come on. Doing my worst challenges, God sent me to help others. Took my focus off of myself. Amen. That's the best way to do it. I will. Marie Brown, the secretary of our church, I will. Lakisa. Uh, Lakisa says, I will. Wanda says, I will. I will. Winnie to you says, I will. Evelyn Theart says, I will. I want to thank you all for your time. I want to thank you. And I challenge us from this day on to be hearers of the word and doers. Get out of trouble. Stop all of this scandalous and stop putting everything about your church on the Facebook. All right. I love you all. God pray for you all. And let God's will be done in your life. I got to get to church because I got to preach. Church work versus kingdom work. There is a difference. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We need to start calling and stop so much texting. That is true. That is true. Get on that phone. Start calling. Y'all like to do selfies? Do a selfie of that. Amen. Amen. There's my sister, Jay. 
Jay, I want to buy your lunch today, okay? I'm going to buy your lunch today. I want to send you something for your lunch, okay? I love my sisters. I love them to death. God gave me two sisters, and I appreciate Precious and Janina. Those are my heart. I will be the rock for my sisters. All right, thank you. There is Sharon, Mississippi. A request, uh, Janina, just request something that whatever you want to eat, request it from me, okay? I'm not giving you a limit. If you want to eat, request it from me today. Thank you, sis. I love you so much. Y'all going to make me cry. All right, remember my model, teaching the word of God and the spirit of excellence and the model of the Sunday school of the church of God in Christ. A child saved is a soul saved plus a life. Amen. Please subscribe to our grandfather's channel.